A set in musical set theory refers to all possible manifestations of a particular pattern of intervals. In this episode of the Set Theory Simplified series, we'll be going over what a set is along with some foundational concepts for understanding set theory. First, let's establish some basics about our perspective with set theory. In set theory, we're concerned with pitches, regardless of their octave or inharmonic spelling. An F-sharp is an F-sharp whether it's in a high or low octave, or whether you prefer to call it G-flat or not. With this view of octave equivalence, we can visualize our 12 pitches as a circle, which conveniently resembles a clock face. In the same way that 12 hours after 3 o'clock we arrive back at 3 o'clock, on our pitch circle moving up 12 steps to an octave from E-flat brings us back to E-flat. So what exactly is a set? Most of us actually already have an intuitive understanding of sets when we refer to concepts like major chords or augmented chords. The general term major chord refers to the set of all major chords starting at any position and in any order. Whether you're playing an E chord in first position or a B chord in root position, they all belong to the major chord set. In future videos, we'll learn to label these sets which will allow us to look up their properties on charts, but what's most important is that we understand which chords and scales are part of the same set, regardless of their label. So do sets refer to chords or scales? The answer is both. Scriabin has a quote that explains the relationship between chords and scales, which applies to set theory. Melody is harmony unfurled. Harmony is furled melody. Whether a chord is broken up horizontally like Alberti bass, or whether the pitches occur simultaneously, we analyze them as sets all the same. In Debussy's whole tone prelude, the whole tone scale isn't played by a single voice melody, or by a simultaneously occurring chord, but by moving major thirds. In set theory analysis, we would circle the pitches that are relevant to each other, write out the unique pitches, and determine what set the pitches belong to, which in this case is the whole tone set. When we speak about intervals in set theory, we use semitones rather than diatonic intervals. Instead of saying the distance is a half step, we'll say one semitone, a whole step is two semitones, and so on. Using semitones, we can describe the pattern of intervals that make up chords and scales. For example, the interval pattern for a major chord would be plus four, plus three, and then plus five to bring us back to our starting point. Since our interval pattern brings us through the octave, it always adds up to 12 and uses as many numbers as there are pitches in the set. We can think of the interval pattern as the essential blueprint of each set and intervals as their building blocks. With all this in mind, let's recap what a set is. A set includes all manifestations of an interval pattern. The interval pattern can start on any pitch and the notes could be played in any order, in succession, or simultaneously. In the next two videos, we'll focus on understanding modes and inversions, which are two iterations of the interval pattern which are included in sets. Learning to understand chords and scales as interval patterns on a pitch circle allows us to understand their essential qualities and draw connections between chords and scales that we wouldn't otherwise see. What are your thoughts and questions on sets, interval patterns, and the pitch circle? Let me know in the comments, like, subscribe, and support me on Patreon.